Monday marked the 217th anniversary of the passing of the anti-slavery legislation in this country. That was the day, 217 years ago, that it got the royal assent. And of course, it was William Wilberforce who campaigned from that ever since 1780. It wasn't just him, but he was the leading man. And yet, somehow, this debate just never, ever goes away. And overnight, we get yet another report and poll, this time from the repair campaign. Uh, and this suggests that six in ten say that descendants of enslaved people are owed a formal apology, and a smaller number think some form of financial recompense is due. Well, today we sent GB News' reporter Anna Riley to the Wilberforce Monument in Hull to ask passers-by if they supported the idea of an apology. Should Caribbean nations and descendants of enslaved people receive a formal apology? Yes, I think, I think they should. Yes, it was terrible, terrible time, and thank goodness slavery is over. Well, it should come from our government on behalf of us. Of course, of course. To be honest, I wouldn't make a, a big deal of it. I think, quite honestly, a lot of fuss is made about it for countries that really now need to get their own act together for something that happened centuries ago. I, I just don't know whether the money's there today, to be honest with you, but something has to be done. But I believe that what's happening today in in UK and how people of colour are treated makes me absolutely angry and furious that things aren't improving. Well, I believe that the slavery has always been around thousands and thousands of years, and it is today. Even we were slaves at one time. I mean, the Irish used to take us as slaves, you know, for about 500 years. So it's happened to all of them. So I don't think they should stand out from everybody else. Well, a range of opinions there. Now, this is going to be an in-house GB News debate. It certainly is because Albi Amancona, host of the Saturday Five and co-founder of Conservatives Against Racism, joins me, as does GB News presenter Nana Akua. Now, there we are, you see. We don't all think the same at GB News. <laughs> <laughs> you think to read some newspaper reports, we're all clones somehow. So, let's kick this off, Albi. Should we give an apology for slavery? Well, look, I think we've heard a range of opinions there mm -hmm. in the, the interviews that we have just yep. seen. And it very much reflects some of the research that has been conducted in the polling that we've seen where six in ten Britons support a formal apology from the British government or the British state to enslaved people. Now, I don't want people to think of all black people as descendants of slaves. I am from, my family are from Ghana. I believe Nana's family are from Ghana That's as well. Right, yeah. We've got as much to do with slavery as you do, Nigel. So yeah. not all people of African descent, descent have been impacted by slavery. Nonetheless, I do think these sorts of gestures are important. And I think it can help build a sense of Britishness in a part of the population which might not have always felt welcome well, in this country. Let me tell you something that very few people know. Mm. I'm a nutcase historian, so I sort of know these very odd things. Because, we, folks, we've already apologised. We did so absolutely formally. It happened in 1840. Prince Albert, on behalf of himself and Queen Victoria, gave a speech, and actually a very important speech, and a very progressive speech for 1840, and he gave it to the Society for the Extinction of the Slave Trade. Albert said, I sincerely trust that this great country will not relax in its efforts until it has finally and forever put an end to a state of things so repugnant to the spirit of Christianity and the best feelings of our nature. And that's really my point, Albie, is you can't go on apologising again and again. Because if you apologise again, it suggests that the first apology wasn't sincere. Do you see what I mean? I completely see what you mean, but I think there is quite a, a big difference between saying apologise again and again and apologising twice. And I think that one of the things that we could do in this apology is actually talk about the fact mm. that, the, that Britain played a key role in ending the slave trade. That there was this no, no, apology no, no. That's from Prince Albert yeah. in 1840. And that is very, I think very all important. of those things can be restated for the modern age, mm. Nigel, and then we can finally put the issue no, there accept. once and for all. I accept 1840 was quite a long time ago. Whether our next presenter thinks that, we'll ask him in a moment. Um, uh, Nana, uh, I mean... You sometimes I would think with this debate that it was uniquely the British mm. Mm. that invented slavery and barbarism when, as one of the chaps from Hull said, 
This has been going on rather a long time. Well, there is literally no race of peoples who have not been enslaved at some point by someone. And actually, if you go really far back to things like 1500 BC and all that, you'll actually find that the slave, there was slavery in Central and Northern Africa. And if you go slightly further back, the Egyptians had mm. lots of slaves mm. as well. Mm. So I don't see why someone somewhere should be apologising for something they literally have nothing to do with at all. And I'm sick and tired of it, actually. Why should anybody be apologising to anybody. And actually, it was the Africans. They have a slave trade. They still have a slave trade now. Oh, and if these people who are... say things like These that. virtue signalling people who say, oh, we want another apology, we want another apology. We want another... Well, OK, lay down your iPhone, lay down the cheap clothes that you, you are wearing now, because a lot of them are created by modern-day slavery, and start dealing with the slavery that's happening now. I just, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired no, of people know. asking for these apologies. But if you make that point, you know, that it was Africans that actually sold the slaves. Well, the they British did, yes. I mean, you know, everyone goes potty when you say it. One of the problems with this, Albie, is if we do repeat the apology, then the next demand is for reparations. It's almost never-ending, mm. this, isn't it? I take that point. I'm very staunchly against reparations, and I just think it would be totally impractical and unfeasible to be paying reparations to anyone. First of all, who do you pay it to? Mm. How on earth do you calculate that sum of money? Well, I, think, I think there's a very, I think there's a very big difference, Nana and Nigel, between simply saying, I am sorry for this act to that who? happened in the past, Tell and me. saying I'm going to pay billions or trillions of pounds to people who have got no absolutely nothing to do yep. with the slave trade. But, but Albie, the very point you've made with regard to reparations, you don't know who, who should be paying who. Who are you apologising to? Well, who, you... who are you apologising to? Me? Is it you? Who... No, well, I've well, already who... made the point but, that but, it, wouldn't, but it wouldn't be to us because we're, we're, not, we're not descendants of slaves. Well, but it would we be... need to apologise then because our ancestors definitely... Possibly, I think, I think that so is a conversation right, which should be had now. more broadly. Well, that's right. But yeah. I restate my point that I think an apology would be a good gesture to the descendants of enslaved, enslaved people around the world and also that it would be important to talk about Britain's role in the end of the slave trade in that apology. But in this review, it's mostly, they said the majority of Africans, a lot of people who they asked, they agreed, the Africans agreed that there should be an apology. Well, perhaps they need to go back and look at history. I think that a lot of the people in this country have been educated very badly with the history because when I went to school, they started with the transatlantic slave trade and there was no mention of any, any other slave trade before that. Mm. I think people are very ill-educated no, as to what happened. And the most important thing, and, and to be fair, Abby did mention it, is the incredible work of the Royal Naval Squadron, who yeah. for nearly 40 years tried to drive slavery off the high seas. Thank you, folks, for coming in.